Hello. Today we're going to represent the transfer of electrons during ion bond formation. When we work through this type of problem, we have several steps we need to follow. The first, we're going to be writing the Lewis dot structure or symbol for each element involved within the bond. We're going to show the transfer of electrons with arrows, and this transfer will always occur from the metal to the nonmetal. So making sure you understand which is which is going to be important. We then are going to draw the Lewis dot symbol of each ion after that transfer has occurred, and that is going to include the number of each ion that we need as well as the charge that forms on each ion. And then finally we end by writing the formula of the completed ionic compound. All right, I'm going to run through two examples. The first, we'll look at the formation of a compound between potassium and fluorine. All right, so we start again with writing the Lewis dot symbol of each. So the Lewis dot symbol for potassium uses its elemental symbol, K, and then the number of valence electrons are represented by dots. As an alkali metal in group one, potassium has one valence electron, so we get one dot. We look at fluorine, which is in group 17, the halogens, and it has seven valence electrons that we represent with our seven dots. For the transfer of electrons, that transfer is always going to occur from the metal to the nonmetal. So we show that with an arrow. Potassium has one to give, fluorine needs one. So our two elements should have their completed octets. To represent the ions that have formed, we do Lewis dot symbols again, but this time because potassium has given away its electron, we show it with no dots, and then we give it the correct charge, which will be plus one. For fluorine, because it's accepted that electron, it should now have eight dots. So we put eight dots around the fluorine atom, and that additional electron gives it a minus one charge. Now, when we form ionic compounds, the compound that forms should be neutral overall. So I suggest that you check your charges. And if we look, we have a plus one charge for the cation and a minus one charge for the anion. If we add those together, we get zero which means that our compound is in fact neutral. We then draw the symbol, sorry, the formula of the compound that is formed by listing the number of each atom using subscripts. And here we have one of each, so our formula is going to be KF. All right, now if we shift down, let's look at magnesium and iodine. All right, so we again start by drawing the Lewis dot symbol of our ions, I mean our atoms, sorry. We have two dots for magnesium as an alkaline metal in group two. For iodine, again a halogen in group 17, we have seven valence electrons, so seven dots. So we start with our transfer of one of magnesium's valence electrons to iodine. This iodine now has eight valence electrons and is unwilling to accept any more. So we have a problem because we still have a valence electron from magnesium that we need to transfer. So that means we actually need a second atom of iodine. So we draw a second atom with seven valence electrons, and we show that transfer of the second electron from magnesium to the second atom of iodine. So when we show our ions, for magnesium, we have one magnesium ion formed with no dots, but that ion has a plus two charge because it released two electrons. If we look, we have not one, but two iodine atoms, which we represent with a large two, and each one of those iodine ions now has eight electrons that we represent with dots and is a minus one charge. If we check the compound's charge overall, we have a minus two, or sorry, plus two charge for the cation, and then we have two minus one ions, so we get a minus two overall, plus two and minus two is zero, which tells us that our compound, again, is neutral. We then finish up by drawing the formula for this compound. We have one magnesium atom associated with two iodine atoms, so we get MgI2. When you're working these types of problems, it is important that you make sure that you are adding the correct number of atoms so that the electrons transferred or accepted give everybody that is there the octet that they need. If that means you need to add additional nonmetal atoms, you should do so. 
If it means you need to add additional metal atoms, you should do so. If it means you need to add some extras of both, then you should do so. In the end, the goal is neutrality for the compound, which means you may need more than one.